Hi, good afternoon everybody, and this is Burke Lyle Sports Talk here on YouTube. And right now, major news happened around the NFL yesterday, and it kind of surprised me. Rob Gronkowski is out of retirement and has been traded to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I repeat, Rob Gronkowski has been traded to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and is back with Tom Brady once again. So, um, how surprised, so again, talking about what just happened. This was a surprise for me since we know Gronk, he retired about a year ago, uh, about 13 months ago, and I initially thought hey, he's probably going to stay retired. I mean, you never know. And then all of a sudden yesterday, this happened yesterday afternoon, he was traded to the Bucks. And my first thoughts, trying to remember what they were, I, I, at first I was thinking about Tom Brady. I was thinking about, wow, his retirement's over. Uh, things like that. So I was reading numerous articles. Bill Barnwell wrote a very good article. Um, also, Jeff Howe from The Athletic, right for the Patriots, I read articles from The Athletic. Kind of people wait, weighing in and giving opinions. And uh, there's another good article from Yahoo Sports talking about, and here's what they kind of all came up with, what they all had in common, which I didn't think about this for a day. Gronkowski, Gronk, was apparently tired of being in the Patriots organization under the and being coached by Bill Belichick. I think that's the way it was. Since why did he retire and then come out of retirement to play for the Buccaneers? The only reason Tom Brady, I don't think he wanted to play for any other quarterback besides Tom Brady. Two years ago, he was about to be traded to the Lions for a first round pick. Belichick was about to do that since Belichick decided, and that was after really his final really good year, and we'll talk more about his numbers later on, but that was when he decided to go on to Detroit. Belichick decided, you know what, let's trade him while we have the value. I think it was first round picks. First and second round picks in that year's draft with him. Gronk didn't want to go to Detroit, even if it was for Matt Patricia. And said, no, I'm not doing this. I'm going to retire if you do this. So that's how that trade went away. So the power was on Gronk. And then last year, he saw and his retirement couldn't have come at a better time. It was clear he was slowing down. The Patriots had just won the Super Bowl. And he decided to retire. And here's another thing that Gronk was talking about. I forgot what I think it was in Yahoo Sports was mentioning since it was an analyst for Fox at times last year, how the Patriots were 9-1, they had just beaten the Eagles, and it seemed like they were in a good mood. Like, you know, it seemed like they had some problems to deal with, whatever they, there was, they're 9-1, yet yeah, it seemed like there was, I'm trying to think of the word, tensions in the locker room. And that team, as good as they were, at time, as good as they looked at times last year, I think, you know, I think there's just too much pressure, and eventually, I mean, and last year's Patriots, the signs we talked about, in December, we're wondering, what is this team? How good are they going to be in the playoffs? Are they going to lose that first round bye? I mean, we were talking about, you know, I remember did a video right after the Chiefs game, which was about three weeks after that Eagles game. And, yeah, they won defensive battles against the Eagles and Cowboys. Sure, that's great. But down the stretch, I talked about the worst thing that could happen is they lose their first round bye some way, and they just lose in the first round. That's exactly what happened. And the Patriots, as we knew it, that era – was over right so there was tension inside the Patriots and Brady was ready to move on Gronk was ready to move on they both voluntarily decided decided to leave they were not traded Gronk almost was as we just mentioned so they both decided they had enough of the Patriots Brady lasted for 20 years Gronk lasted for nine they were together a long time in New England you think about all the star players that have come and gone through New England I don't think there's anyone who's really retired as a Patriot start to finish. If there's anybody we thought it would be, we thought it would be Brady. And sure, Brady will be welcome back and at some ceremony five years from now. Oh, certainly, Brady will always be a Patriot, but just end of career Buccaneer. Okay, so thinking about the trade now, and again, if you have asked me 24 hours ago, 24 hours ago, is Robert Gronkowski... Is Gronk going to play in 2020? I, I, to be honest, 
I had not thought about Gronk in a long time. I mean, I knew, okay, he retired about a year ago. And then I think he's doing some wrestling things. I think maybe did, maybe he's acting. I don't know. I heard talks of him acting at some point. I knew he was an analyst for Fox. I, I thought there'd be no way he'd play this year. Like, 24 hours of wrestling with Gronk. I, mean, I wouldn't have thought about really anything. Uh, or... I would have had very, I would have put very little thought into it. And then it just came up, you know, some stories are sudden, right? And this is a story that has just come up and has uh, broken the news. And is definitely at this time right now. And again, this is right before the NFL draft. And we are living in a sports world where there has been very little news. And in in if you talk Major League Baseball, NBA, National Hockey League, the other three major sports... The only news you're getting is just guessing and speculation. Oh, is MLB going to play here? Or is the NHL going to play here? When are they going to play? If Are they going to play? Is the season done? Like, what's going on? Like, we, six weeks later, I have no idea about these leagues right now. The NFL, what do you think? I mean, you've seen my most recent videos, right? Go back to about videos starting six weeks ago, right? I was talking about, oh, sports is shut down, okay? And then I was talking about how sports shutting down, and then the next week came up, about five weeks ago, mid-March. NFL free agency, I, I got to do that for a week. That was fun. And then Cam Newton got released, okay. Okay, but any, and then the MLB did some proposals, which I, maybe I should make another video about the MLB, talking about Arizona and Florida spring training sites, whatever. Okay, I've talked about that. That's been guesses. Uh, the other leagues, I've talked about just trying to play the, the guessing game of what I think. And for the NBA and NHL, we won't know anything for another probably a week or so, perhaps more. So those are what's going on in the NBA and NHL, MLB, we don't know. So again, I haven't, there's no been really no real news stories of news that we know is going to happen. All the other leagues are just speculation. I mean, I can play the guessing game. I mean, again, I could make another video going on for 30 minutes what I think is going to happen. At this point, I don't know. So, so, And then last week there was news about Leonard Fournette and then the draft and Chase Young. And here's some interesting draft news. Justin Herbert, I've seen as high as 2 and as low as like 23 or something like that. It, it's It's been crazy. So, again, so the NFL draft is the big story of the week and of, of sports really – right now i mean are there really any other stories going on so again now talking about gronk so again i've gone on now for a minute now just talking about recent trends the nfl which which should be some of their quieter times i mean granted their nfl free agency is always a big deal the nfl drafts is always a huge deal every year i mean i'm all, i'm always investing into it even if there should be the second round of the stanley cup playoffs starting right now and nba playoffs on their way baseball a month in right the nfl has been front and center of the news pretty much for many weeks now it has been the front and center and i think it will continue to be since there's just one news story after another so again if you take a eliminate the nfl i would have almost no news to talk about so the nfl which is, these are supposed to be some of my quieter times, has now become my main news story source. So just all these stories going on right now, all these stories. Okay, so Gronk's, so moving on. Okay, so Gronk is now on the Bucks now. So obviously reunited with Tom Brady. And the Patriots only got a fourth rounder in return. I think the Bucks also got a seventh round pick. So you, so you have extra fourth-round pick. Okay, that's nice. What are you going to do with that fourth-round pick, right? Maybe draft a lineman. Maybe draft a tight end. I don't know. And again, here's an interesting thing that was not included, which I think Bill Barnwell pointed this out, and I heard talks about this last week. O.J. Howard is not, or even Cameron Braid is not including this deal. And the Patriots' tight end is their biggest weakness. They don't even have, they, they never really had a tight end last year. I mean, it clearly showed the absence of Gronk, and now the uh, Bucks, which tight ends already a strength in them, they have two fairly good tight ends, certainly shown flashes of it at times, you now have three tight ends, one of them is going to get traded, 
And how and how could the Patriots not get an O.J. Howard or even a Cameron Bray? Like, how did they not manage to pull that off? I mean, you know Belichick or front office. Like, how 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 is that? Like, you know, I'm asked that question. How was how did they not get a tight end back? I don't know. They should have. The Bucks should have agreed to send a tight end back their way, but they didn't. And again, I think it's just insurance. I think at some point O.J. Howard. Or Cameron Brait will be traded, whether it's after the draft, whether it's in the summer, or whether it's right before the season. One of them is going to get traded. Again, they're just holding on to their options right now, but for the Patriots, they do not have... That is something that they have been lacking, a tight end. So, that, so that's an interesting question. I don't know why. That, 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 that should have happened, but it didn't. Okay, so now... Kind of want to do a timeline of the career of Gronk right now. Just kind of want to do an overview. So, Gronk in his first year, 2010, just a warm up at, act. Caught 10 touchdown passes. Second year in the league. And this is really when he started to uh, take off. Oh, I'm getting an alert about the National Hockey League. I'll have to read that uh, when I'm when I'm finished with this video. But this could be very interesting. But anyways, back to this. Um, second year in the league. Caught. Had 90 receptions. For 120. For 1,300 yards. 17 touchdown passes. All pro year. That was one of the best seasons the Titans ever had. And at just 22 was really just beginning to break the surface. But then in 2012 and 2013, played in just 18 uh, games, including missing nine games in 2013. I think he was hurt during that, that, during the stretch run for the playoffs. Did manage to make 11 touchdown receptions in 2012, but 2013 was a down year. Lowest production since rookie year 2014 came back, played in 15 games, 82 receptions, 1,100 yards, 12 touchdowns. 2015, 15 games, caught oh, well over 1,100 yards, almost 1,200, 11 touchdowns, so again, double-digit touchdowns, four times, fifth time in his career, fifth time in six years, and then 2016 played only eight games, I think he missed that Super Bowl run that year, I think they won the Super Bowl, if Adam had just 540 yards in eight games and just three touchdown passes, and really his last good year was 2017. Caught 69 passes, almost 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns. That was his last really good year, lost in the Super Bowl. In his final year, 47 receptions in just 13 games, 682 yards, just three touchdown passes. So his play really declined. In fact, did not play in the playoffs in 2013. Had a big playoffs in 2011, catching three touchdown passes. Didn't really do anything. That's, oh, so he got hurt in the 2012 playoffs as well. Didn't play in 2013. Came back 2014. 16 receptions, 3 touchdowns, 204 yards. And then had a huge playoffs in 2015. 227 yards, 3 touchdowns. And then missed 2016. Came back in 17. 3 touchdowns in 3 games. And then 2018. Played in 3 games. 200 yards, had a big game in the Super Bowl. So again, one of the great playoff performers ever has been really good in the playoffs in 16 games, 81 receptions, 1,163 yards, 12 touchdowns. So that is a full season. So that's an extra season right there. So again, Gronk is a really good playoff performer, has always stepped up in the playoffs, but has missed two postseason runs. So again, so the point is, Gronk has had a lot of injuries. He's had a huge amount of injuries in his career. I think he's had back problems. I think he had an ACL, whatever, arm, whatever, you name it. He's had, has just battled through so many injuries. I mean, again, you think about his four greatest seasons. Again, when he's at his very best. So, again, 2011, 2014, and 15. And then kind of came back in 2017, so he's had 1,000 yards, four different times, double-digit touchdowns, his first three years, five times. So, so he's had a great career, 
when he's healthy, he's been the best tight end in the, in the NFL. The best tight end in the last decade, no doubt. Gronk. So again, great player, but again, has been slowed by injuries. And I'm not surprised that he retired since nine years dealing with all the injuries he had. You know what this is? You know what he needed? I think what he needed is just a year off. You know, he had just won a Super Bowl. He has three Super Bowl rings. Only got to play in two of the Super Bowls. Wins, which is unfortunate. And I think his entire career has played in five Super Bowls. So again, winning... So he's had, obviously accomplished something more than any other tight end's ever accomplished. He's one of the great tight ends of all time. Certainly when healthy, might be the best pure tight end to ever play, like when healthy. So, so then now, he comes back. So again, sure he's in great shape for, like look like somebody like me, okay? I run, I do push-ups and crunches, I, I work out a lot. Okay, Gronk's in incredible shape. Gronk is in world-class shape right now for any regular person. I'm just speculating this. For an athlete, he's not he's not in football, NFL football shape right now. He's taking a year off to obviously rest his body. I think he's also going to share concussions to rest his body to then kind of get back. And now the time is right since, again, reading these articles, like Gronk is, does not want to, didn't want to play in Detroit, obviously, wouldn't want to, Will not want to play, say, in Washington right now. Obviously, no way. I mean, they have a weakness at tight end or Baltimore or wherever else. He only wants to play with Tom Brady. That's the reason why he came out of retirement. I mean, why else would he come out of retirement unless he went to the Bucks? And again, I think he's just waiting for the right time. And again, so he took a year off. I mean, Jason Witten took a year off. But again, so he takes a year off. He comes back. So now it's about getting back into football shape. Right, so he has about five months, or who knows how long, until the NFL season starts. This year, we're under different circumstances, so you get back into football shape, and obviously, you have to learn the Tampa Bay offense. Which again, who knows how much practice time will be this off season, right? So you have to learn Bruce Arians' offense. What type of role will he play? So again, so with Gronk, since obviously you have plenty of weapons now. I mean, he was the primary weapon for years in New England. You have Chris. Goodwin, you have Mike Evans, in addition to an O.J. Howard or Cameron Brait, so they have a supplemental tight end, probably the best other tight ends he had, probably since the days of Aaron Hernandez. Um, so you have plenty of options around you. So you're probably the third receiver option, which, which adds very... So you're probably the third receiver option. So again, don't expect 2011 Gronk numbers or whatever, 2014, 15, kind of mid-20s type numbers. What I would expect is somewhere between, say, probably 2018 or 2012 numbers. I'm going to say he's going to get, I don't know, 700. I don't know. I, what I would count on is 50, I don't know, 50 to 70 catches. I'm just guessing here. Anywhere from maybe 700 to maybe somewhat close to a thousand yards, somewhere between 750 and a thousand, maybe. I mean, maybe that's too high, and maybe five to ten touchdown receptions. So we're not going to get vintage Gronk, and if we do, that's great. That's a great bonus, but don't expect that. So again, he's back with so he's back with Brady, and and that's really what he wanted. I mean, this is why he's in Tampa. So when I saw Gronk trade to Tampa Bay, at first I was surprised, but I think that's the only place he'd want to play. He's going to be back with Brady now. And he's going to be a key piece to... The Bucks went from... I don't know where they were going since they gave Jameis five years to figure it out. That never happened. The Bucks are certainly... Sure, certainly should make it to the playoffs. I mean, being 7th out of 16 in your conference. That should happen. They should be a playoff team. Now, how far are they going in the playoffs? That's another question. Since you have the Drew Brees Saints that are back again. They have won... 13 games each of the last two years. They've had playoff disappointments in each of the last three years. I mean, if they, I mean, who knows if they beat Minnesota, right? Certainly, do they beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl? Do they, and whatever happened last year, the Saints are hungry once again. The Falcons could be better. So with the Bucks, I think it's between the Bucks and the Saints. Whoever won those divisional games, probably whoever wins those games against each other, Probably wins the division. 
and most likely has possibly a first round by loser will have to play in the wild card round so again does Tom Brady and the Bucks have to play in a wild card round again and be at risk of being one and done and this is a strong NFC I mean the NFC has been very strong for the last um oh and and under the new rules unless they're the one seed they have to play in the wild card round so either way I mean, think about all those Patriots teams that were two seeds, right? I think all the, I think in 2013, 15, and 2018, among other years, they would have had to play in that wild card round. So things are different. So there's a good chance, unless they're the best team in the NFC, that's the same for the Saints. You're going to be playing in that wild card round, and again, uh, you're playing in that trap game. Maybe the Falcons are the last team in, and they get hot. So again, so you can make speculations about what's going to happen this season. I have no idea. I, I mean, again, with this COVID-19, talking about all the other three major sports, we have no clue whatsoever right now. And then with this league, we don't know either. Are they going to start on time, number one? Number two, you can't expect to have 70,000 people packed together, right? So, again, I'm excited to see Gronk in Tampa. I'm excited to see Brady in Tampa. And the worst part is people in Tampa Bay – who are obviously very excited. Main, there's a good chance they might not get to, get to see him play at all this year. I mean, what if this NFL season, like with other leagues, there's no NFL season, and then that is a very and that is certainly a strong possibility that there is no NFL season. You cannot rule that out. So we don't know what's going on with this virus. For the most part, I mean, six weeks ago, if you asked me, if would ask me six weeks ago, I would have thought things would have, been, would have been better than they were now. I've always been optimistic, or most of the time been optimistic. So, again, whatever happens with the NFL season, with determines what we see out of the Bucks this year. So, again, this is really exciting news. I think Gronk makes, gives Brady another weapon, which I think tomorrow in the draft, they will and should select an offensive lineman to really give Brady that extra protection. That's really what he needs right now. Last year when he didn't have that, it caused some ineffectiveness. It caused him to sink in the playoffs. I mean, we saw those Super Bowls, even Brady when he's young, uh, younger. Think about the New York Giants or the Eagles. Putting pressure on Brady really makes things harder since he's not going to move around the pocket and, and roll out. He's mostly going to stand in the pocket. So, again, give Brady help. The Bucks are doing by bringing in Gronk. I think that gives him extra motivation. So, does Gronk win his fifth Super Bowl or fourth? And does Brady win his seventh Super Bowl in, say, Tampa Bay? That, that's interesting to see. It, it's an, you know it's another good news story during this slow sports period. So again, uh, just to wrap up now, I've said all that I need to about Gronk. So obviously, I like the move. I think it's good right now. It looks good right now. It brings more excitement in Tampa Bay. This is a Brady and Gronk reunion. I think they'll both feed off that. And I think right now, I think they already were, and I think the Bucks right now, you could say, you can make an argument that they are Super Bowl contenders. Now, once the season starts and once the game starts, that's a whole other story. But for right now, if you want to look at the current uh, picture of the league, the Bucks again, are contenders to win, to win the, um, to, ah, I'm losing my words. They are contenders to win this NFC South. If not the Super Bowl. So we'll see. This is obviously very exciting news. So I'm looking forward to it. So uh, tomorrow's the NFL draft. Uh, now will I make a video on the draft? I think I probably so. Just kind of making guesses and stuff. You know, I look, I've read a lot of mock drafts. I've read a fair amount of scouting reports. Still have a lot of scouting reports to read. Uh, you know, and look, uh, I'm, I'm going to still keep reading like the Dwayne Bluger draft guide. Uh, or whatever from The Athletic, I'm going to continue to read that even a few days after the draft. You know, just keep reading about it since, again, these guys have yet to play NFL games. Until they play NFL games, then we don't know what type of players they are. It's just speculation. So, again, think about organizations like Cincinnati. If not want a playoff game in 30 years, that this could all change. And I think this time it really will change. I think they could win a playoff game within the next few years, and then who knows? Does this franchise finally win that Super Bowl with Joe Burrow as their quarterback? So, again... I'm interested about this draft. I mean, I, I'll try to see what I can, uh, you know, I'll definitely talk about this draft, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's after the draft. Since again, not nothing's final. I mean, there's been plenty of mocks. This is the biggest event in sports right now, and the draft this year is going to basically be like, you know, I've had to use Zoom, which, let me be honest, 
two months ago or in early March, I never heard of Zoom. I never thought I'd ever need it. Well, guess what? And it's now, it seems like one of the most famous companies right now. So the NFL Draft will basically be on Zoom or webcast or whatever. It's going to be very different. It's not going to be, I think it was supposed to be in Vegas this year. Tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands of people. You, couldn't, you just can't do that stuff anymore. So I'm looking forward to the draft. Um, I saw Michael Jordan's last dance as well. And look, I'm done talking about Gronk. So if you want to stop watching, that's fine. I'm just kind of adding to the video a little bit longer. So I watched Michael Jordan's uh, last dance. It was very good. It was a good film. I highly recommend seeing it if you haven't seen it. It kind of talks about their last season, 97-98, uh, when Jordan won his sixth title. Spoiler. That happened 22 years ago. Kind of talked about Scottie Pippen as well, which, again, I, I did not realize how severely underpaid he was. I mean, you could not get away with this now. There's no way in the world, but just the amount of money he's making. It kind of reminds me of that contract at Ozzy Albies got a year ago, which they're making way less than what they're worth but again it's a lot of money i mean if somebody asked me 18 million dollars for and again that was 30 years ago when that contract was taking place so again obviously got a big payday i think from houston and then later portland so really made up for it towards the later stage of his career so that was very interesting kind of does michael jordan flashbacks of his north carolina days in the game when he shot against georgetown in 1982 and then kind of his rookie year 1986 scoring 63 against the Celtics in the playoffs against the Larry Bird led Celtics. So again, very good film parts three and four this Sunday night. So again, when that film is complete, it will be kind of mid May. So again, from where we were, say three weeks ago, April, I think we're at, I think we're doing better now than we were then. That's just my opinion. The virus obviously is worse. There are more cases and there are far more deaths than there were then. Over 40,000 people died. There are, I think now, right around 800,000 cases. I mean, we'll be at a million certainly by May 1st. I mean, when is this going to stop? I don't know. Hopefully this slows down soon. But in terms of normal summer, like, will I be sitting in right field in Yankee Stadium listening, getting to, getting to sit in the bleachers and every few minutes hear the subway roar through? No, probably not. Will I be in Washington, D.C. this summer at Nationals Park? I doubt it. Even uh, just any major league stadium, that's not going to happen. Will there be a... So what's going to look like? So again, um, there's some news coming out of the NHL that I just happened to see very briefly. I think I was reading Gronk's numbers and it came out. I don't know what, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to have to read about it. And this could possibly be another video to talk about soon. So again, biggest sports news right now, NFL Draft. I'm looking forward to seeing it tomorrow night, more than ever before. Since again, I said this many times, in, in years past, I mean, usually right now. should I mean, I think right now the Capitals should be getting ready against, uh, it should be Caps, Penguins, 4.0, 4 in 5 years and five times in 12 years in the Ovechkin-Crosby era. That's what it should be right now. It should be the start of the NBA playoffs. It should, we should be a month in the MLB season, but we're not. So the NFL draft is going to take place. That's going to get me through tomorrow night. off all day to look forward to it. And then uh, Friday night, that will be a good viewing. And then Saturday afternoon, that will be a good thing to watch. So again, will I watch all of it? Probably not. I'll definitely watch all of rounds one through three. I may come in and out of rounds four through seven since again I might watch bits and pieces of the fourth and through seven rounds but it's going to be interesting this year just a different draft since again in years past I watched bits and pieces of the first round really kind of following along but again you have the Stanley Cup playoffs NBA playoffs perhaps Major League Baseball so again you have all four major sports going on in some way or another that night this year it's the NFL and that's it I mean I went on a I went on for two minutes talking about how the NFL has been the only news source that's been providing by far the most news over the last um, th six weeks. So again, we'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to the draft. Uh, I'm wondering what will happen with the second pick. I, it's, I'm convinced it's Chase Young, but I just saw a mock draft that could be two of going to Washington. So again, I, I'm looking forward to talking about this and maybe all the questions I have about the draft towards myself maybe I'll do one a draft show tomorrow I, I don't know 
nothing's finalized. It's something, it's something I'm thinking about doing. Look, I just enjoy making these videos. It's fun. I like doing it. So I've gone on for 30 minutes. I managed to go on for 30 minutes. And the last seven, I've just been talking. So, again, thank you for watching. And by the way, uh, only watch like the first 23 minutes. Don't watch the last seven minutes. It's, it's, it's not worth it unless you want to. So, again, thank you for um, listening. We'll see you next time. Tomorrow is the NFL Draft.